joules the total energy of the atomic orbital is 5 joules so the total energy of the atomic orbital is equal to the total energy of the molecular orbital it means that if the total energy of the atomic orbital is 5 joules then the molecular orbital must have 5 joules of energy but we know that molecular bond, bonding molecular orbitals are lower in energy than the atomic orbitals whereas anti-bonding molecular orbitals are higher in, in energy than the atomic orbitals. Then how it's possible? Suppose the energy of bonding molecular orbital is 1 joule and that of the anti-bonding molecular orbital is 4 joules. So the total energy will become 5 joules. Now look at here the bonding molecular orbital that is having an energy of 1 joule is less than that of the atomic orbital's energy whereas the anti-bonding molecular orbital are higher in energy that is 4 joules. And the sum of these two energies is equal to the sum of the atomic orbital energy. Total energy of the molecular orbitals is always equal to the total energy of combining atomic orbitals. Next, the bonding molecular orbitals formed by head-on overlap of atomic orbitals are denoted by sigma notation, while the bonding molecular orbitals formed sidewise overlap of atomic orbitals are denoted by pi notation. Next, anti-bonding molecular orbitals are denoted by sigma star and pi star notation. Bonding molecular orbitals are filled first, then the anti-bonding molecular orbitals are filled with electrons. This filling is according to the Aufbau principle. Bonding molecular orbitals are lower in energy, therefore they are more stable. Whereas the anti-bonding molecular orbitals having high energy, therefore they are less stable. The number of the covalent bond between two atoms is called bond order. So the formula for the bond order is half of the difference between the electrons in the bonding molecular orbitals and the anti-bonding molecular orbitals.